Thank you for downloading this episode of A History of Central Florida podcast. This is the podcast where we explore Central Florida's history through the artifacts found in local area museums and historical societies. This series is brought to you by Riches, the regional initiative to collect the histories, experiences, and stories of Central Florida, and the Orange County Regional History Center. I am Chip Ford, and I will be your host for today's episode titled, Gatch Family Farm Equipment. Today, when we think of grocery shopping in Central Florida, we think of purchasing food items from the local grocery store, which has a large selection of items to choose from. The convenience that modern supermarkets provide is something that we take for granted in the 21st century. In Central Florida during the late part of the 19th and early part of the 20th centuries, there were no grocery stores as we know them today. There were markets and general goods stores in urban areas, but the shopping experience was completely different than it is today. For example, consumers placed their order at the counter, and store clerks went to go get the items off shelves, not the shopper. There were few options for people to obtain fresh vegetables in rural parts of central Florida. They either had to grow it themselves or purchase it from local farmers' markets. Who then grew the vegetables found at these markets, and how did they do it? The answer is found within the items of this podcast. Willard Gatch was a third-generation citrus farmer from Altoona, Florida. He, his father, and his grandfather cultivated citrus trees alongside other types of crops. Mr. Gatch grew and provided vegetables for his family, and sold the excess at local markets. Not every farmer owned or had access to a tractor, so farmers like Mr. Gatch cultivated their crops with hand tools and horse-drawn equipment such as the one showcased in this episode. Mr. Gatch donated a majority of his family's farm equipment to the Lake County Historical Museum before he passed away. Another thing to realize is that not all farmers were the same. We talked with Dr. Connie Lester from the University of Central Florida to explain the differences between small farmers in Central Florida during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. There were really two kinds of small farmers. Some were subsistence farmers, which meant that they planted first to feed their families and livestock. And if they had any surplus, they sold that on local markets or regional markets. These farmers avoided debt and in doing so they protected their land for their children but they were unlikely to advance economically and their children were unlikely to spend very much time in school. An increasing number of small farmers though entered the commercial market and that meant that they were planting a single crop that was intended for sale in regional and national markets. They often had large gardens for their family use, but they purchased more and more of their food and all of their consumer goods um, and did uh, have more of those kinds of purchases than subsistence farmers did. The Gatch family could be considered small commercial farmers because they grew citrus to be sold in outside markets. But what types of crops did small subsistence farmers grow? We asked Dr. Mark Long from the University of Central Florida to give us some answers. Well, typically, again, partly it's depend, depending on where they are in the state, right? So it, some of it's driven by access to water, by the soils, whether they're in, in the sort of up on the ridge or in the low, lower areas. Um, but largely, uh, they were planting a lot of uh, market crops. So it would be um, things that you know are common today. They would obviously tomatoes, uh, a lot of greens would be raised, and a lot of them would use um, for the rest of their planting. I mean, they did grow corn. Uh, as well in, in their in their gardens somewhat. So they you know they would have plows and things for, for the row crops as well, but again on a much smaller scale. Here, from an interview recorded before his death, Willard Gatch describes his farm and what other crops he grew. He will also talk about surrounding farms there in Altoona. I raised field, field peas, yeah, conch, conch pea, black eyed peas, conch peas was a was a good eating pea. Black eyed pea is our early pea, and it matures quick. That's the uh, first pea you plant in the spring. 
Oh, there's uh, two dozen types of peas or more. Of course, we lived on the farm. Everybody you know was living out in the woods, uh, lived on the place where you raised something, had chickens and hogs, and some had cows, you know. Different pieces of equipment were utilized for different types of jobs. Here, Mr. Gatch explains the uses of two pieces of his farming equipment, the opening plow and the cedar. The first one, the plow here, is called an opening plow. You, you, uh, yeah, you open the fur to plant your seed. And then the planter here is called a cultivator. Planter Junior is, is, a, is a, a trade bank for it. Uh, plants the seed and you can plant it in this fur if you want to plant it reasonably deep like farmers used to. Sometimes they plant it kind of on top of the dirt, not too deep. But th this opening plow is, is mainly, mainly for opening the fur to plant seed in. Another piece of equipment that Mr. Gatch had was the corn grinder. Mr. Gatch used this piece of equipment to separate corn kernels from the ear. Corn was a crop that was found on most, if not all, the small farms in Florida and throughout the South. We asked Dr. Lester to explain the many uses of corn and its role in Florida agriculture. Corn was a ubiquitous crop in Florida as it was everywhere in the United States. Farm families ate corn and cornbread, and in the South they ate grits. Indeed, corn constituted such a large part of the Southern diet that pellagra, a niacin deficiency disease became a problem for the poor in the region. Corn was also used to feed livestock. And in some areas, the most popular use for corn was in the making of whiskey. The ground corn for Mr. Gatch's corn grinder, then, would be used for a variety of purposes, thus making it a necessary item to have on his or any type of small farm. Yet how did small farmers like the Gatch family obtain these types of tools? Here, Dr. Lester explains how they and other farming families might have obtained their farming equipment. Early in the history of American farming, farm tools were crafted largely by the farmers themselves, with the metal parts being purchased from local blacksmiths. After the Civil War, though, you saw the rise of farm implement firms. Um, that made plows and harrows and other tools. Those firms were located in New South cities like Chattanooga and in the states of Indiana and Illinois. Farmers had a lot of options for buying those tools. Some bought them from traveling salesmen who worked for the firms themselves and who came around and held demonstrations to show how the tools could be used and what kind of productivity you could get through the use of those tools. Others bought their tools from the local general store. Some of them were members of uh, agricultural organizations that had cooperative stores for buying tools. But increasingly, farmers bought their tools from mail order catalogs like Sears Roebuck or Montgomery Ward. That was possible because railroads expanded to all parts of the country. And after 1893, rule free delivery. Uh, was available to farm families. Local merchants were not pleased when they saw their sales plummet because people were buying at a cheaper price from the mail order catalogs. And it sometimes created somewhat of a local um, animosity between farmers and, and uh, store owners. Sears eventually offered to ship their items in plain wrappings to disguise their origins. One rather large question remains. Why did a farmer like Mr. Gatch grow corn and other subsistence crops alongside citrus in Lake County during the early to mid-20th century? Dr. Long provides us with some insight into this question. Initially, there is a compelling reason, which is that uh, citrus doesn't produce a, a marketable crop for a number of years. One historian has referred to that as the long, hungry gap from the time you put your citrus in the ground until you can actually begin to sell citrus on the market. You know, it can be anywhere from six, sorry, seven to ten years. Uh, early on in particular, later they got a little more sophisticated with, with buying uh, trees that were already sort of uh, slightly older and it would bring the gap down to five. But So you have five years as a farmer uh, 
later seven to ten years early on where you have to you know you both feed yourself and find some sort of cash crop uh, for a local market uh, while you're waiting for your citrus to develop for an international or national or international market to sell. So that's one compelling reason. Another is simply uh, diversification. And many growers prior to the great freeze of 1894 and 95 did not practice that kind of diversification. They were they had single row crop of citrus and, no, and they were wiped out, devastated by that freeze. Those who did practice a more diversified crop, they had some citrus as a basic cash crop as well as um, vegetables in particular, uh, depending on where they were in the state, sometimes even cotton, um, they, it, they had a, a more diverse economic base and they were able to withstand that uh, sort of trauma of the freeze of 1894 and 95. These other small farmers who diversified their crops sometimes stayed with the crops they knew would bring them profit. Commercial farmers, such as the Duda family in Seminole County, grew celery, and Harry Ulster discovered that Boston ferns could be grown in greenhouses around Apopka. Both became very successful by cultivating agricultural products other than citrus. The Gatch family farm equipment represents a time when agriculture was the dominant industry in Central Florida. Their story is a facet of that history, which has largely been forgotten because of the dominant citrus farming had in Central Florida. Small farmer families like the Gatches were successful at growing sustenance crops alongside citrus trees, and other families were as well. Sometimes these other crops became the main commercial crop rather than the citrus trees. The Gatch family farm equipment then tells the story of not just one family, but it can also tell the story of the farming culture in central Florida during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of A History of Central Florida podcast. If you would like to see these and other items that tell the history of Central Florida, you can visit the Lake County Historical Museum at 317 West Main Street, Tavares, Florida, 32778. Please join us for our next episode titled Company Script.